Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing In Praise of Learning by Henry Cow. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. I just found these old mittens in the wardrobe and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna record a video with them. I don't know why, but Henry Cow just kind of seemed right for me. Anyway, it doesn't have anything to do with the album. Here are some of my favorite bits, though, from this album. So yet again we are coming back to Henry Cow. Now unfortunately in this video we will be skipping one album and we'll go right to reviewing 1975's In Praise of Learning. That means that this year we unfortunately wouldn't be reviewing two other Henry Cow albums being Unrest and Western Culture. Anyhow, seeing as I've already done an episode about Henry Cow, I basically got behind me all the entire over review about this band so if you want to know more about Henry Cow what led to their creation and the creation of their debut album I highly suggest that you go ahead and check out episode 247 but as far as I'm concerned I am very pleased with that episode but I was pointed out on one mistake that I made so I might as well correct it now so unlike what I said the real movement wasn't made out of bands that had the same political ideologies but instead it was based basically spearheaded by Henry Cow, who were very politically charged, and alongside them you can say that a band like Stormy Six from Italy was also a pretty ideological band, but some of the rest of these bands were not actually that active politically, but were instead handpicked by Henry Cow themselves and were being given the spotlight by them because, as Henry Cow would put it, the prog journalism at the time tried to shun them. And yeah, that's basically the original real movement in a nutshell and now we can move on. So last time when I reviewed Leg End by Henry Cow I had a pretty interesting experience with the album because on the one hand it was fairly intriguingly enjoyable but on the other hand it did make for quite the arduous listen. And one thing that definitely has left me puzzled when I finished listening to that album is the fact that it wasn't as politically charged if even at all as what I had expected from Henry Cow's music. The only song on that album which really has a defined political message on it is actually the last track on the entire album called Nine Funerals for the Citizen King. And that one is a very interesting song. Now back then I kind of didn't really understand why this album was so just avant-garde without any real opposition ideologies, but now I've come to realize that this was the band at the start of their way, they still didn't know what direction they were taking with their music and being very much conceptual and ideological was still not in their top priorities. But when it comes to today's album, it's entirely different because this one is everything that has to do with their own opinions, thoughts and personal ideological motives. So today's album opens with the rightfully named track called War and this one is a dystopian and very bleak representation of our world and what war does to us and it is delivered most brilliantly by the vocals of Dagmar Klaus and she is also duetting with Peter Blegvald who appears here on the vocals but does not do so on the rest of this album leaving Klaus to be the leading vocalist for the entirety of this album. 
And personally, I found this song to be much more accessible than anything to be found on Leg End and it was kind of surprising to me because my personal assumption was that they would get even more avant-garde and more wacky as time went on, but instead they went for something a bit more accessible and approachable and I guess that's the right way to go when you're trying to move someone ideologically. And this song also contains what is probably my favorite quote from the entire album. Now I'm pretty sure that the members of Henry Cow didn't actually actually coined this quote but actually just took it from somewhere else. Nevertheless, this quote is a beautiful one stating that violence completes the partial mind and honestly I don't know what about you, I just think that sums it up quite well. But let's face it, the real beauty of this album isn't its first track, rather its second and this track is just a lovely song, a big ol' epic and it's called Living in the Heart of the Beast. Which come to think of it really sounds like like a name for a song you'd find on Aphrodite's Child 666. Nevertheless, this one is also carried by the vocals by Krauss, and on here she's much less rough and ragged like she sung on War, and instead she has a more dynamic sort of tone, something that I would compare to the style of singing done by Anna Meek on Caterpillar's debut album. Now, I am no professor of music, I have no idea how to really dissect music when it comes to its components and melodical components and rhythmical components, I do not know any of that, but what I can tell you is that despite not being able to tear down this song and actually dissect it part by part, I can still definitely say that I loved it to bits. I don't know why, I can totally get why someone would hate this one, but personally I think that this would be my favorite Henry Cow song until this point. And heck, that's even before we said anything about the beautiful lyrics to accompany this entire song. So alongside the absurd melodies and very much disassociated rhythms on this entire track, it also features some very interesting and quite vivid lyrics on it as well that I could only describe as some sort of a call of arms. Arms. And well, this one does seem to be quite charged ideologically, but personally, as a non-British person who was not born back at the time when this one came out, I honestly really can't relate to the entire groundworks that led to the creation of this song, but in some sense there will always be a governing force and there is always going to be someone who opposes it and I can relate to that on some level. And something that I personally really really liked about this one and the lyrics in particular is how they are just very much non-polished and very much rugged unlike the lyrics you'd find on the debut by Henry Cow. This is a very grotesque representation of the real life, the real world and honestly when talking about such strong ideas, the best way of doing it is by shocking your listeners a bit, at least in very vivid and horrifying images. And like any good song, this one has a perfect ending, both musically but both lyrically, ending with a very, very impactful verse that is just a huge call of arms, which is just lovely in my opinion. I don't really know why I love this song so much, but when it comes to the ideological moving motifs of Henry Cow, I think that this is the shining crown of it. Now, so far so good, I've been really enjoying this album and this was the end of side one. And then we move on to side two, which is where I actually start having issues with this album. Unfortunately, it opens up with a track called Beginning the Long March, which is referencing, of course, the revolutions in communist China back in the day. Now, this one, aside from its title, doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just an avant-garde improvisation, you might even call it a sound collage if you will. It doesn't really have anything to do and for me at least it really just stops the flow of this entire album to take you to something else which sounds a lot more like something you'd find on leg end, which honestly I didn't quite enjoy. But after those six minutes we come back to yet another lovely song, this time called Beautiful as the Moon, Terrible as an Army with Banners. What an odd title, but I love it very very much so. And this one is sort of a continuation of Living in the Heart of the Beast, although it isn't as good as the first one. Nevertheless, when it ends we again come into yet another one of those very avant-garde improvisation pieces, this one being called Evening Star, which references a name of a journal, a daily journal if I'm correct, that was published by the Communist Party in Britain back in the day. And again, much like 
beginning the long march it doesn't really have anything to do with politics or ideologies other than its title and again just really ruins the flow of this album to me and i'm not enjoying it that much i would have much preferred this entire album if it was just one long and very conceptual piece so my feelings about this album are pretty mixed at the moment i really don't know if it's that good or not that good but one thing that i do believe i know pretty confidently is that this album is slightly better than the debut of leg end and that's good when determining how to rate this album later on but for now i think i should move on to talking about this one's cover so one of the main reasons i wanted to get henry cow into this list actually had to do with the album covers I'm sorry, but it just had to be that. I love these album covers. This socks, they're so iconic and it's just so lovely. When I saw that there were three of them, I knew that all three had to make it on the list. So I added this album as well. Now, of course, this cover, much like the previous two, was made by the close friend of the band called Ray Smith, in which he creates this sock, usually created out of acrylic paint that was squeezed out of a pastry bag. And of course it always represents the album in tone and colors and fits it quite like a sock yes pun intended I love the blood red color on here and the stark lines from which the sock is made it just fits this album so so well with its very you know rough messages and the red that features all the communist propaganda it's just really good in my opinion and currently i'm still zigzagging between choosing which cover i like the best whether it be the debuts cover or this one and i quite don't know which one i like more so if you have a strong opinion about that you can always leave it down in the comments so if i went on objectivity alone i think that this one for its absurdity and oddness would have been given a rating of let's say seven but i just can't view this one as being an equal to the debut and I think that it is slightly better so I'll call this one a pretty solid 8 out of 10. But that's about it guys I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be listening to A Little Man and a House and the Whole World Window by Cardiacs. Yes we're coming back to these guys and I'm so so excited. I of course want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon so thank you so much to Clay Wan and Rist of Kings and Lindsay Haycox. You guys are just the best and if any if you want to support me over on patreon you can find the link down in the description or in my about page but that's about it guys have a wonderful day and i'll catch you all tomorrow bye guys